So in the previous lesson, we looked at a system of nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to form ammonia, and I showed you how the system reaches equilibrium for the first time. So the system is now in equilibrium. We can see that by these parallel lines, and the rate has become constant. Now we are going to make a change to the system. Remember Le Chatelier says that if we change concentration, pressure, or temperature then we can cause the system to we can take it out of equilibrium and then the system will react in such a way to try and restore equilibrium so the way it's going to work is the following we are increasing the concentration of n2 so that is an immediate change and so straight away you can see that there has been an increase in the nitrogen now the system is a little bit upset because now it's out of equilibrium and now the system is going to try react in such a way to try get to equilibrium again. So we increased the concentration of nitrogen and so the system is now going to try decrease the amount of nitrogen. And so will the forward or will the reverse reaction be favored? Well the forward reaction is going to be favored because if you go forward, then you use up your nitrogen. And so the nitrogen is now going to start decreasing as well as the hydrogen. And so there we can see that both the nitrogen and hydrogen have now gone down. Notice that the nitrogen had a little peak over here, and that was because we added some of the, some nitrogen. Now because the forward reaction is being favored, the amount of ammonia will increase. And so there we have a system that has reached equilibrium for the second time. We can see that these three lines are all parallel once again. Now we need to look at how the rate graph was changed. So we know that the forward reaction was favored. So the way this works is you go to the forward reaction, which is the one up here, and you let it spike upwards like that over there. You then let it settle a little bit, but at a higher level than what it was. So it will be something like this. Then the blue graph, which is the reverse, will simply go and join it. And so there the system reaches equilibrium at a higher level than what it was before. That is because if you increase pressure, concentration, or temperature, then the system's speed has to increase. No matter whether the equilibrium will go left or whether it goes right. If you increase any one of those, the rate of your reaction will increase. That is very important that you understand. That has nothing to do with equilibrium. That is its own thing. And by the same way, if you decrease any one of those three, then the reaction speed will slow down. And so there I've summarized it. If you increase pressure, concentration, or temperature, the reaction will speed up. If you decrease any one of those, the reaction will slow down. All right, so now that we have reached equilibrium for the second time, we're going to make another change. We're now going to decrease the concentration of hydrogen. So straight away on your concentration graph, the hydrogen will drop. Now you need to think about Le Chatelier. So Le Chatelier says that if you decrease the concentration of hydrogen, then the system will react in such a way to make more hydrogen. And so the reverse reaction is going to be favored. And so that's going to cause the nitrogen hydrogen to increase and it will cause the NH3 to decrease. And so there we have it. We can see that the hydrogen dropped and then it increases. The nitrogen did not drop because it was we didn't add or take away, but you can see that after that change the hydrogen starts I mean the nitrogen starts increasing. And then we can see that the ammonia, which is the NH3, that one dropped over there. Now we need to look at the rate graph. Now this is where it gets a bit interesting. So we know that the total rate is going to decrease. Remember I wrote it in these two places a few seconds ago that if you decrease anything such as concentration, pressure or temperature then the overall rate is going to decrease. So we're going to end up somewhere lower than where we are at the moment. And so we know that both the forward and the reverse rate are going to slow down, but because the reverse reaction is being favored, it means that it will be a little bit faster than the forward reaction, and so the forward reaction is going to slow down the most. And so we're going to go to the forward reaction and we're going to make it slow down drastically. Then what we're going to do is we're going to let it just come up again and reach that, and then the turquoise one, which is your reverse reaction, will just join it like that. And so notice that our new equilibrium position is at a slower speed than the original. And so once again for this rate graph, we know that both reactions are going to slow down because when you decrease any one of those three factors, it slows down everything. But the forward reaction 
is going to slow down the most. Why? Because the reverse reaction was favored. And so the one that increases the most or slows down the most, that's the one that you have to show on the graph. So whenever we increase something over here, then we look for the one that increases the most. And whenever we decrease something, then we look for the one that slows down the most. And so there we have it, guys. I've shown you two different ways that we can change the equilibrium. And I've showed you on a graph, well, I've shown you on a graph how the system reacts when you do that. Thank you for watching.